Thank you for listening to another episode here of Get Our Talk. Um, we are going to go ahead and try to do this a second time with Mr. Eric Lopez. How are you doing today, Mr. Lopez? I'm doing good. Thank you, Luis. How are you? We're doing good here, too, at Get Our Talk, man. Just here chilling, enjoying the nice day here. Um, so uh, can you go ahead and let us know a little bit about you and uh, your background and where you work, man? Sure. Uh, well, like you say, my name is uh, Eric Lopez. I work at the NASA Johnson Space Center in Houston, Texas. Um, I graduated from the University of Texas at El Paso, UTEP, um, mm-hmm. as an electrical engineer. Right. And I've been uh, supporting the space station program uh, at NASA for the past four years. Um, I grew up here in El Paso and, well... I've uh, been uh, very glad to, you know, have that opportunity to support NASA for the past four years. So that's um, that's hella cool, man. That's a really badass job. And um, so how did you uh, get interested in joining NASA? Has this always been like a dream from your childhood or is this something that just popped up as you were studying? Uh, no, you know what? Uh, the biggest interest started because my old my brother, who's also an engineer, mechanical engineer, uh, started working there. He did a couple of internships, uh, internships when he was in college. Right. Uh, and then he started working there. So I started learning a bunch of different things about NASA and their projects uh, while I was in, in college. Right. So soon after I graduated, I um, started applying for different jobs. And, uh, well, I applied for one at NASA and they gave me an offer that I you know, couldn't resist. Right. And that's when I moved to Houston to start working there. Oh, wow, man. And, uh, what did you do right away when you, uh, get hired? What, what was your job right away with them? So the interesting thing about my job is that, um, when I was going to college, I started UTEP as a graphic designer. And then I switched my major a couple of different times, but I ended up changing to electrical engineering and I graduated with that degree. Right. Uh, but throughout college, I was doing a lot of freelance work for a small companies, small local businesses here in El Paso, uh, you know, doing their uh, advertisement, logo, right. design and things like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I built a little nice portfolio uh, and during my interview at NASA, they really liked that, you know, that I had different skill set, my engineering background and, and also that marketing graphic design part. Right. Uh, so when I first started uh, working there, uh, I was doing a lot of different things with video, promotional video for uh, a space station science. Right. So mm-hmm. the different, uh, the different uh, research and, and scientists that send their uh, experiments to space uh, really need help promoting, you know, what they're doing so that other scientists can, you know, collaborate with them. So when I first started, I, I wasn't doing much engineering. I was doing a uh, video and um, posters and, and advertisement product for, for the space station science. So it was a nice neat uh, transition from engineering to uh, doing uh, graphic design for NASA. Right. Wow, man, that's cool. And how did you start getting more involved in the engineering process? Uh, one of the biggest things uh, was an activity called ham radio. So this is an amateur radio that's on the space station. Right. Uh, and there's uh, an activity that the astronauts do or to talk to students uh, from the space station via okay. this radio. Right. So this is an outreach opportunity. Um, and when I knew I was going to be involved in that activity, uh, I had to, you know, uh, learn how to train the astronauts and, uh, train, you know, myself on how to use the radio. Right. So that's involved with the engineering part of my job. 
Oh, wow. So there is a radio station that gets broadcasted to the space station, right? That's what you're saying? There's a, a radio itself on board the space station uh, with an antenna pointing, uh, you know, to, to the Earth. Right. And that's what uh, some of the students use to uh, contact the astronauts and ask them questions while they're in space. So it's a pretty neat activity. Right. Uh, you can find more information at ARIS, A-R-I-S-S, that uh, org. Right. And actually, students can apply and uh, teachers can apply to have these activities scheduled with the students. Uh, well, they- so it's pretty neat. Yeah, it's pretty cool. That is hella cool, man. So there you go, teachers. Um, if you want to get space involved, go ahead and uh, do that. So uh, and what are you involved now, Mr. Lopez? Is Are you still working on the radio with the space station? Yeah, that's an ongoing activity. It's part of my job. Um, also, not only ham radio, you know, that's used for outreach. Right. But my department uh, has an outreach depart- uh, an outreach component to it where employees like myself and other people uh, go to you know schools and uh, do uh, presentations right now obviously with the pandemic all those activities have been online mm-hmm. so I've had a couple of uh, outreach presentations with you know, schools uh, all over the world, including uh, Costa Rica and Peru and Argentina. So that uh, just has given us the opportunity to uh, branch out outside of the the states and uh, reach out to people, you know, that want to learn about NASA and the science that's going on on the space station. So that's pretty cool. Right, right. That's hella interesting, man. And um, what... So you're from El Paso. Uh, what high school did you graduate here from? I graduated from Eastwood High School. Oh, wow. That's nice. So you're an Eastsider, huh? <laughs> that's... Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I uh, grew up in, like, the Yapro area. Right. I, stand. Uh, uh, I came to the United States. I grew up in, uh, in Mexico in a small city called Delicias, Chihuahua. Couple of hours south from from here. Oh wow! Um, yeah, I I got here when I was twelve. Started middle school at Desertview Middle School, mm-hmm. uh, and then I went to Eastwood High School. Graduated from Eastwood. Uh, when I started a college, I got a tutor tutoring job at my you know former middle school. So I was tutoring at Desertview, mm-hmm. uh, and and the cool thing about that is that. When I got here to the States, Luis, I was uh, uh, what they call an ESL student, uh, English as a second language. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, I was learning I was learning English and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I learned it good enough, I guess, to graduate high school and go to college. But then uh, also I got to tutor uh, ESL students from my same middle school. Uh, so I was a pretty good, like, you know, uh, Closing the the cycle, I guess, uh, with my with my education in in that regard. Right. So I have a you know deep love for for El Paso. Well, that is badass, man. Um, well, me, man, I'm also from Mexico. I'm from uh, Ciudad Juarez, but uh, we moved here. I moved here when I was like five or four years old or something, man, and been here since then. So uh, that's cool, man. I'm glad that uh, you can share that with us. Uh, so other El Pasoans and you know people from Juarez can hear and you know imagine themselves as a as you know some, with a badass job uh, you know we're tired of seeing the community here just you know settle for jobs that just you know just to sustain themselves they don't you know it's not really a possibility to see us in NASA or working at the space station and that's hella cool that we can show someone. Uh, from El Paso and from this area, um, you know, that it can be done. You know, it is possible. You just got to, you know, put your put your heart into it and really get it done, right? Yeah, you're right. There you know. Now, um, Mr. Eric, uh, so are you interested a lot in space? Like, what do you know about exoplanets? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely interested about space. Um, uh, the 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 coolest thing about you know NASA and what what the agency is doing. Uh, well, one of the things that I think is, is the coolest thing is that uh, we're transitioning from um, from a wave boom business on a more commercial aspect. Uh, that means that if we want these projects to continue and be sustainable and, you know, essentially, you know, reach higher uh, destinations and, and things like going back to the moon and visit Mars and whatnot, right. uh, a lot of those efforts are being uh, pioneered by private companies like SpaceX mm -hmm. and Boeing and Blue Origin that are looking for ways to commercialize these uh, technologies, right? Right. And not only use it for the sake of science and exploration, which is the main goal right now, but also, you know, find ways to take people that just want to travel for, you know, for fun, just to explore, you know, space and things like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, a, a lot of the, those things are happening right now in uh, in the White House where, we wanna we wanna support these companies through through NASA mm -hmm. and making sure they they're successful, uh, but also making sure that you know NASA can uh, leverage from uh, what they're doing and become another customer right in this uh, big um, space economy. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's happening right now. Uh, that started. Uh, couple of years ago, actually one year ago in 2019, mm -hmm. they signed an agreement to, you know, allow these private companies to take private astronauts. Um, there's a lot of different uh, conversations about, you know, maybe taking uh, Tom Cruise to do a movie up there, things like that. Uh, yeah. So it, it's happening. So it's very exciting that I'm part of that. Right. Uh, yeah, I've heard that argument before, man. And I've also heard a lot of scientists that are against uh, commercializing space travel. Um, what do you think about that? They say that it's not a good idea to let, you know, companies um, do these type of projects, that it's best to keep them at a federal level. Um, have you heard that those arguments? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people are not very sure, you know, about this. Uh, but we just need to look at history and see how, you know, every big technology that um, is, is now being used commercially and uh, very accessible to most people. One of the things that I think about is, you know, flight. Uh, when we, you know, use a plane to go from city to city here in the States, uh, that technology used to be very expensive, right? It used to be very... Uh, really, uh, only only a couple of people could afford it, mm -hmm. uh, and those technologies, you know, a lot of it was developed by the military, and and now that that private companies uh, took a hold of it and it started, you know, competing amongst each other, then mm -hmm. the prices go down and it makes it more accessible to us. So I see the same transitioning regarding space. Right, right now, there's only a couple of stakeholders, uh, agency, uh, space agencies around the world, including NASA, uh, Russia, which uh, has Roscosmos, that's their space agency, uh, JAXA, that's the Japanese space agency, uh, and and others that you know are big players. However, we wanna we wanna make them uh, even more accessible. And that's where the private companies come in and they start competing amongst each other so that they can reduce cost and just make all the processes uh, more effective and efficient. Right. So there's kind of arguments. I think what's going to you know, show if it's working is just time. And as we go, you know, uh, as we go uh, develop these technologies, I think that's where we're going to see if it's working or not. Damn, that's that's crazy. So, does NASA plan to buy these these rockets from the corporations, or are we just gonna like rent them? Yeah, the the idea is that uh, we, in a way, uh, pay for their services, right? 
Mm-hmm. So even if it's not us, if it's not NASA buying the uh, uh, the rockets, they'll uh, hire SpaceX and and buy some space in the rockets. Mm-hmm. So if NASA wants to take an astronaut, uh, they'll pay for a seat in uh, one of these rockets, and then maybe some other company is also traveling in that same rocket. If that makes sense, so right. you're just paying for the services. Right. So. so- so SpaceX won the contract to work with NASA, and uh, but do you know how uh, how uh, or the an update on how Virgin is doing with their trying to get to space too? Sorry, can you repeat that question one more time? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, I, I said uh, I think that uh, SpaceX won the contract, no, for the for the space rocket thing um, with NASA, but uh, yeah, yeah. I, I was also wondering, though, I think uh, Virgin is also trying to compete with that, right? Building a rocket. Do you know how they're doing with, with that? Uh, uh, yeah, so you're correct. Um, SpaceX has won a couple different contracts with NASA. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's other companies like Virgin also, you know, applying for those, for those grants and those contracts to, you know, do their own thing. Right. Uh, but the, their focus are a little bit in 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 a little bit different things. Uh, so SpaceX has the Crew Dragon. So this is the the capsule that's uh, gonna take astronauts to, to the space station, and um, and that's one of their biggest, I guess, projects. Right. And Virgin Galactic um, is a company that. It's focused a little bit more on uh, tourism in uh, low Earth orbit. Right. So, okay. so uh, yeah, it's it's a little bit different, but they're all working towards the same goal, right? Which is uh, commercializing uh, space right. and make it a little bit more accessible to other companies that want to use these uh, resources. Yeah, but Elon Musk wants to go to just to Mars and stuff, right? He wants to take it out there far as hell, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, um, and well, how, what do you think about this? Will it be attainable to uh, regular average folks like us, or will we have to wait like another two hundred years for it to be cheap enough for us to be able to go? <laughs> uh, hopefully, it's not two hundred years. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, definitely at the beginning, I don't think it's gonna be. Uh, that accessible for us regular, you know, uh, income people that you know uh, are are making you know ends means. But uh, for for a couple of years, I think uh, the the main users are going to be companies that are either making a profit uh, or you know doing research and things like that. Mm. Um, but as soon as we you know see this. Um, new private companies competing against each other and lowering prices, making the um, processes and the technologies more e- effective and efficient. Uh, I think that's, uh, one, that's what's going to drive uh, low cost. Right. Uh, and hopefully, you know, in, in a couple of years from now, we'll, we'll be able to, you know, save up to, to do, do a trip to the moon or something like that. <laughs> it's very right. exciting to think about that. Yeah. yeah, take like a fab, like a quinceañera to the moon instead of a quinceañera. <laughs> ¿Qué quieres, mija? ¿Era la luna o la quinceañera? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Um, now, I wanted to ask you, man, on, on a more serious note, we had talked to this yeah. architect, right, from Ciudad Juarez, uh, el señor uh, Daniel Samarón. And he was explaining to us, right, about that they want to build a mine in Samalayuca and all the things that could go wrong, right? The water could get um, contaminated that we drink here in our, this region and the agriculture. But I've also heard that uh, they're trying to go to asteroids to bring minerals and precious metals back. Do you think that's a, that's a more... Um, like a more sustainable way of bringing, you know, resources and so we could use them or 
Because, I mean, it's, it's probably really expensive just to go to a to an asteroid, you no? Know? Yeah, yeah. And um, to be to be honest with you, Luis, uh, that's dictated a lot by the administration, right? Um, right. So NASA is a federal agency, and depending on the administration that you have, uh, they take, like, the lead on where NASA is going to focus on. Right. Um, when uh, the current administration started, uh, there was a big hype about, you know, going back to the moon and taking, um, you know, that step to uh, essentially put a, a lunar base and, and live there and whatnot. So that's still the, the plan. That's where we're going. Uh, but when it com comes to climate change, there's a lot of different projects that are, you know, targeted to that. So NASA has different centers uh, around the, the country, one of them being uh, the one where I work at, at Johnson Space Center in Houston. Right. Uh, the, the one in Houston, uh, the Johnson Space Center focuses on human spaceflight. So everything that has to do with humans being in space Right. Uh, it's, you know, essentially that's our forte, right? That's our strength. Mm -hmm. And that's where uh, we manage all that. But there's other centers like the Goddard uh, Space Center in uh, Virginia. Mm -hmm. Those guys up there are doing research and they're the ones developing the, you know, different telescopes and also different technologies to study cl climate change. Mm -hmm. uh, so... You know, that's that's the way uh, the agency is divided. So you have a lot of different projects. Uh, a lot of them are, you know, are targeting different things. Uh, but one of the main focus on uh, that NASA has regarding, you know, what we're doing, if it's sending uh, people to, to the moon or if it's, you know, developing a, a satellite that's going to, you know, land in one of the asteroids and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the main all goal has always been how is this mission gonna, you know, help the humans on Earth, right? Mm -hmm. How what we're doing, the technology that we're developing, uh, what's the best, uh, you know, the best alternative to help humanity in, in, on Earth? Mm -hmm. uh, because at the end of the day, NASA's a you know uh, taxpayers uh, agency, so it's funded by by all the the tax money. Right. And our stakeholders uh, are, you know, U.S. citizens that are paying taxes, and uh, and we need to, you know, be able to to respond to to that. Right. And the cool thing about um, uh, what you're saying uh, is that at the end of the day, it's going to be a a decision from the White House, right, where we want to focus our um, our resources, our money, right. And uh, the cool thing is that when when Biden was announced, you know, elect president elect, he uh, he kind of mentioned how he wants to focus a lot of the NASA. And this is not official yet. I'm just uh, telling you what I read on online. Right. Mm -hmm. um, the 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 new administration aims to focus um, more of the NASA resources towards you know, climate change. So mm -hmm. personally, for me, I think that's a, that's a great thing. I think uh, that's uh, uh, not only a national problem, but, a, you know, global issue, climate change. Right. And um, and if and if NASA is going to be, you know, tasked to tackle some of these challenges, uh, I think it's going to be very exciting how our engineers and scientists are, you know, going to go, go work on that. Right. Um, but yeah, I hope that, uh, kind of answers your question. I, w I know it was a very long answer for your question, but ah. that's just what I know how the, uh, the agency works and where we allocate, um, resources and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, I mean, it's not about all about fun, right? We do have to take care of our planet. I know they want to go ahead and terraform Mars and, do all this crazy thing, find an exoplanet that we can live on and possibly get to. But all that seems so far away, you know, like like something that would happen years and years from now. But, uh, you know, this whole climate thing and messing up our planet with nuclear waste and whatnot, 
it's happening now, you know? It's something that we need to address now. We don't have, I don't think we have time to see if we can invent something or go to the asteroids and bring back elements, you know? And plus, um, yeah. jet propulsion is really expensive, right? I mean, they're still using fuel. I know, I think they're, I heard that they were looking at using antimatter or something like that to, uh, to that was the most closest to uh, space travel. Do you know anything about that? No, I really don't know um, much about that, Luis. Sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah, I had, I had uh, heard some of that, that the, the most closest, the closest thing that they're looking at and using so they won't use fuel as some type of antimatter or something like that, but I'm not too sure. And also, because I look at the space station feeds, those life feeds, and I was seeing that they mm -hmm. were replacing the bat the batteries there, um, that they were replacing them for something. Do you know why they were replacing them, or that was not your department either? No, 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 no. Uh, like I told you, most of those things that I uh, work on is uh, – human space flight, so space station, that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have a couple of friends that work at the uh, Ames Research Center, that's the NASA Center in California. Mm -hmm. uh, that's very close to the one in uh, Pasadena, California, that's the Jet Proportion lab. Right. lab. And those guys are the ones doing all the research on, you know, Propulsion and um, fuel efficiency and, and all of that. Oh wow! And also, man, um, can you tell us a little bit about the program here at UTEP with NASA and space exploration? I know that uh, we we try to contact them, um, but I guess because of this whole Corona thing and they're trying to teach over online and whatnot, I guess they're really busy right now. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, do, what, what is it exactly? Like, what are they teaching there when they say NASA and space exploration and UTEP? Uh, yeah, so uh, NASA sponsors um, research centers uh, in different universities. Right. Uh, one of them is at UTEP. Mm -hmm. So essentially UTEP students and professors are doing uh, research for for NASA, right. and either if you're you know if you're a master's student and you're doing your project something related to that, you probably get a you know a grant to work there, um, or or the professor doing the research you know probably teach at UTEP and um, have this grant to do research for NASA. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's the extent of what I know, you know, when it comes to the space exploration technology research center at NASA. That's what, how it's called. Uh, and uh, I've had a couple of friends that work there, uh, but about the work that they're doing and the project that the research that they're doing, I'm not very familiar with. Right. But, but, but is it based more on jet propulsion also, or is it more on like, telescopes and finding exoplanets or what is it based mostly on? I really don't know, Luis. Oh, okay. Um, I'm trying to, you know, do a quick Google search while we're talking, uh, but it's, it sounds like it's uh, based in airspace energy. So, so mm -hmm. energy, you know, airspace energy can mean a lot of different things. Right. Uh, not only propulsion, but once you're up there, you know, how do you maximize your energy? You're going to need, you know, some kind of uh, solar panel maybe to create, you know, energy for the astronauts. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you're going to need all, all the oxygen and, and, you know, the elements to survive. Mm -hmm. So that, that might be a big area when they're talking about aerospace uh, and energy, right? right. Uh, but I don't know the extent. I wasn't really familiar with that um, part of UTEP when I was a student. Right. And um, let, let me ask you, man, on a more personal opinion note, right? Um, I was listening mm -hmm. to that scientist, uh, Brian Cox, right? You know, you heard of him, right? Um, and he was, they asked him if he believed in aliens or if 
he thought they were it was like another planet close by with people and I mean not people but you know intelligent beings living there and he said that in his opinion he looks at it more in a in a more like a the galaxy type of way right where he believes that we are the only ones in this galaxy um he says that yeah there, 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 there's got to be more in other galaxies because there's billions of galaxies but when it comes to our galaxy he thinks that earth might be yeah the only one because it's so it's so uh all the events that have to happen for an earth to be able to exist there's so many you know so many factors that have to play in that it, that he thinks it's mostly just you know earth that has humans what do you think about that on a personal level yeah well um uh, our galaxy, right? It's, it's huge, and we only know um, what we can see on images, and 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 the, the interesting thing about you know our our solar system, even you know something that we've we've uh, explored for for years and years, right. uh, we know it's very hard to you know consider a life within our solar system just because of the way uh, the sun is and temperature and radiation and, and all that. Uh, but we're looking at our star, the sun, and we know that we have, you know, thousands and millions of, of those within our own galaxy. Mm -hmm. So it would be crazy to think, you know, that there's not another, um, uh, another very similar planet um, than ours within our same galaxy. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my personal opinion, but um, I'm not very sure. I, I would like to think there's there's more out there for sure. Right. It's an exciting thought, you know. Right. Well, I keep telling everyone, but the New York Times and I, I think the Air Force or I don't remember what branch, but they're they're admitting that they're seeing um, aircraft from out of this world that's not from here. Um, there, they interviewed this this pilot um, that he, I mean, he claims they saw him. You know that they look like TikToks, those TikToks, mm -hmm. their breath fresheners, and that they travel, but they have they show no signs of a uh, of any type of heat propulsion or anything like that. That they don't know how the hell that they're traveling and that they disappear and it appear thirty miles late, uh, thirty miles farther, like in five seconds or 10 seconds and 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 yeah they they this came out on the new york times man like it's it's supposedly they are they, they admitted already that they're seeing these things and that they've been seeing them for a while have you heard anything about this <laughs> no i haven't but but uh i'm gonna say it's the russians you know <laughs> ah, right. a, lot of, <laughs> a lot of different a lot of different times you know uh, the 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 military in different countries, I think, you know, they're doing their own thing, and and sometimes we, uh, that's my that's my uh, uh, assumption, you right. know, very, uh, I I guess very close minded, you know, I I I am just trying to keep it, you know, logic, right. <laughs> and it's like the different military doing their own experiments and whatnot. Oh, it's very, you know, you want to keep it uh, low key, right? You want to keep it a secret so yeah. that the other folks don't find out what you're doing. Uh, and then if you see something like that, like, oh, it's aliens, right? That's like the first uh, assumption you're going to make. Uh, but no, it's interesting. If, if you can, uh, if you want to ask Daniel to send me that uh, Times article, I'll be happy to read it and find out a little more about that. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um it's it's actually it was a podcast man if you go on uh the joe rogan podcast he had a he had that pilot there i think um oh, no nah, i'm not even gonna try to remember his name but it, I'm, I'm sure if you put it on youtube like uh joe rogan pilot aliens or aircraft ufos it'll come up man and 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 this this guy doesn't look like like a bullshitter, he looks pretty legit, man. He, he 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 was, he was like high ranks in the military, and he was commanding other jet, jet pilot missions and shit. 
And yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, he seemed pretty legit. And he said, yeah, that they've been seeing him since like 2000 and like the early 2000s and shit. That they, they've been seeing him since then. But, and then I don't know, man. But so you don't believe that aliens <laughs> come to Earth? Well, I, I really don't know. I, I, I want to think that, you know, there's life out there. I don't know if they're around us, you know? Right. <laughs> And um, and it's a it's a very uh, exciting, but at the same time, it's a scary thought, you know. Yeah, like <laughs> why are they here and shit, you know? Like, if they here? Yeah, but I'll I'll check it out that that podcast. Um, yeah, man, um, you should. It's it's interesting as hell. I was like, damn, that's crazy. Now, also uh, another opinion I would like to ask. Um, a lot of people think, and to be honest, I might be one of them, man. That uh, that it's bullshit that we've been to the moon, <laughs> cause uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know, you know, so many weird things like why haven't we gone back? And and then I th- I think NASA says because they lost the the whole plans on how to build those shuttles or whatever to go to the moon. Well, I don't even know, but uh, what do you think about that, man? I mean, are you pretty sure that we've been there? No, we definitely went to the moon. Um, we did uh, land there, and you know, we brought back uh, uh, some samples of uh, dust and rocks and and things like that. Right. Um, and and the interesting thing about you know going to the moon, it goes back to like I told you earlier, the administration and where do they see value and doing research and whatnot. Right. So for the past couple of decade, decades, our uh, administrations, our previous administrations, uh, didn't see the value in like you know going back to the moon. Mm-hmm. Just like I would have bigger issues to solve uh, here on Earth or like cl- closer proximity, right? Like uh, the space station and whatnot. Right. Um, but but the plan right now it's a project called Artemis. So. This aims to go back to the moon and build a station there so we can stay. Uh, and the reason why um, our current administration decided to go that, that route, it's because if we want to explore, uh, you know, farther planets like Mars, uh, eventually, you know, go to maybe outside of the solar system in the future. Right. The, the moon provides a very good platform because... It doesn't have as big of uh, as a gravity pool compared to the Earth. Mm-hmm. So if you want to launch a rocket from the moon, it will be more effective than launching it from here. You know, all the the gravity that's pulling down the rocket, you know, all this fuel. Uh, and if you do it from the moon, well, uh, because the moon doesn't have that, uh, the same gravity, and also it doesn't have the... Um, the different uh, layers that the Earth has, mm-hmm. um, the the atmosphere is is not gonna you know be another force that prevents you from uh, traveling farther. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's been the plan right now. And of course, if you are gonna go back to the moon, you don't want to do it like you did it uh, in the sixties right. because you want to stay there now, right? You want to take the technology that you need to to get there and stay there and um, build a lunar base. Mm. Uh, so, of course, that technology does not exist right now. Uh, they need to develop it. And and for for NASA to develop it and other, um, maybe other groups around the, the country, including the military, it takes resources, right? And it takes a lot of um, investment from the government to do this. Mm. Um, and... And yeah, so so I think we did go to the moon, um, uh, and we want to go back for different uh, regions now. Right. Uh, and and we got we have to remember that the the moon landing, and uh, you know the first the first astronauts to orbit the Earth, um, all that was uh, during the the space race, right, with with the Soviet Union, with with Russia. Mm-hmm. So it was a very political uh, activity, and 
uh, once we found out the, the scientific value of traveling to space, then mm. uh, things kind of shifted from there. So, so yeah, uh, I think the moon is it's also very... I think all of us see it like, oh, it's a very, you know, magical thing. Like, we go back to the moon. Mm. Uh, but we also need to look at the scientific value and and once we do that, I think it's it's clear why we probably should go back. Right. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, I want to believe because it's, it's badass, right, knowing that humanity already went. Because, I mean, I know the space station is not really in space. It's still within, you know, the, <laughs> the atmosphere. So to, to to know that humanity has really gone outside the the boundaries of Earth, and and stepped out into like another basically little like a mini planet, right? I mean, you could say the moon is like a little mini rock, you know. Um, and but I don't know, man. I've heard so many things. Like whenever uh, they took the first step, right? The the astronaut came down, took the first step. There's a picture of that from the outside, and then I'm like, well, who took that picture then? You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of <laughs> There's a lot of things that I'm like, what the hell? I don't know. I don't know what. And then I've heard that there is a, a ozone layer, some type of layer, and I think they call it the Van Halen layer, or some shit. And they say that any anything that's metal that passes through there will just get zapped. That there's no way that we could leave this atmosphere. Is it, have you heard anything about that? Uh, no, not about that specifically, and I understand a lot of the confusion, you know, when it comes to who took the picture and whatnot. Right. Uh, so Neil Armstrong was the first uh, man to step on the moon, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a lot of footage and pictures, um, but a lot of the pictures is not him. It's actually uh, one of his crew crewmates uh, on the pictures. So that's part of the one of the funny things about NASA, like the inside joke. Right. It's like, oh, when we see a picture of the moon, like we all think like, oh, it's Neil Armstrong, right? The the famous guy, the, the first man to step on the moon. Right. But a lot of those pictures is uh, I forgot his name, but it's not him. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I got famous, but all these pictures are you know are not from me. Was was uh, so that's a funny inside joke. Was Buzz Aldrin in that mission too, or he went later or something? Who? Buzz Aldrin. Yeah, he wasn't that. He wasn't that mission. Oh. Uh, Buzz Aldrin, uh, Neil Armstrong, and um, the third, the third astronaut that didn't come out of the, the lunar lander. Right. Which I, his name I don't remember. Right. Um. So so interesting. Um. I'm very interested, Luis, that you you know. <laughs> We're talking about UFOs and aliens here on Earth, but you don't believe that went to the moon. <laughs> well, I mean, it's just crazy. And then, and then, all the all the all the fields, right, to keep us safe from the sun's rays and gravity. And I mean, I don't know if in the '60s we had all that figured out. You know, I mean, it's really strong. The whole the rays from the sun and what what the gravity, the change of gravity can do to your spine and your muscles and all that. And I mean, yeah. to think that in the 60s and, I mean, NASA formed, what, like eight or nine years before that? It was just like mm -hmm. a quick, really fast thing. And I'm like, really? We went to, to space that quick? And it's just really hard <laughs> to believe, man. But, I mean, if we did, I hope we did, but I mean, I hope, you know, it, it becomes more clear of stuff. But I'm excited yeah. to know if we do go back um, to, to to see what kind of possibilities would would open, you know, if we do go back. Are you in the restroom? Yeah. No, I'm uh, making coffee. Right oh, now. all right. <laughs> all right, is this guy using the restroom right now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like you hear the water. No, I'm making some coffee. Oh, um, all right. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> I was gonna tell you. Um, there's a company uh, called uh, Felix and Paul. Uh, these guys, you know, focus on um, virtual reality footage. 
Right. So they developed uh, like a 360 camera. They took it to space. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you Google um, uh, ISS experience, you'll find all about it. Uh, they partnered with Times. Uh, and uh, these guys, you know, have been recording astronauts uh, in the space station. And it's all, everything is a virtual reality, um, uh, you know, production. Mm -hmm. So you, if you have a headset, you can, you know, go uh, aboard the space station and like look at the astronaut doing work and they talk to you and whatnot. Right. So the, the cool thing about this is that uh, this company is planning to uh, develop the technology that they need so that when we go back to the moon, uh, we can take as many people as, as we can. Mm -hmm. So they're thinking if we develop this enough, we can, you know, set up the different cameras around, you know, the, the rocket and, and all that so that when it's happening live, we can, you know, broadcast it and people not only are going to watch it on TV, but they can use their VR and they're going to be there, you know, they're going to oh, be wow. there when we, when we go, when we land on the moon, everything's going to be live. Mm -hmm. So that's a very ambitious project, but maybe you know when you see something like this it's gonna it's gonna make you believe this that we want <laughs> right damn man that's crazy that'd be cool as hell if they could do that i would i would love to feel that experience i, I don't know if i would want to go to space really would you want to go to space yeah definitely i would want to go maybe not for six months but <laughs> Uh, you know, even if I could go a couple hours and come back, I think that would be yeah. you know, a great experience for sure. Like take just like a little little tour of space and then come back. Yeah, I yeah. guess that's fun. <laughs> I guess that would be fun, but I would want to do it until all the glitches have been fixed. I wouldn't want to be one of the first ones. That I, I live them. Uh, that's good that the millionaires would be the first ones to try that thing out because. Yeah, probably millionaires, celebrities, you know. Right. Uh, fun fact about millionaires traveling to space. Uh, you know the the owner of Cirque du Soleil. He went to space uh, a couple of years back. He just uh, bought a a seat in one of the Russian rockets. Mm -hmm. And he he was in the space station for I don't know how long, but again, this is you know the crazy thing is that people have done it in the past. You know, the, the this uh, CEO, the owner of Cirque du Soleil, he traveled, yeah, um, and just for crazy. fun, you know. <laughs> yeah, damn, that's that's cool as hell. But I would like to have money just to take a quick <laughs> trip to the space station. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, uh, Mr. Eric Lopez, um, before we finish, I would also like to uh, like to ask you, um, what are what are your endeavors with NASA or with your what what, what plans do you have from now? Do you, do you keep just you want to just keep working on the radio broadcast or do you want to keep doing other things or what are your plans? If you could tell us, yeah, um, right now uh, I've been. Uh, I guess recruited to to start a, a project that involves um, the commercial part of a space station, right? And uh, one of the main reasons is, uh, or, or the goals that we have, is to raise awareness within our workforce. Right. Uh, a lot of NASA employees don't know what you know the different policies that that are going on. Mm -hmm. And that's a, an internal project, right? We want to make sure that our engineers, our scientists understand what this means and not only understand it, but support it. Mm -hmm. So when they see more involvement from private companies, they understand what, what the goal is, right? right. Which is eventually um, uh, expanded to, to a bigger audience through commercial companies. Mm -hmm. So that's what I, I'm going to be working on for the the next maybe couple of years mm -hmm. uh, but career wise um, I'm looking to go back to school and uh, complete a master's program 
Right. Uh, right now, you know, searching my opportunities and uh, making sure that, you know, I I do my best um, at, you know, at, at the current position that I have with NASA. Right. Uh, but, you know, like, like everything else in life, you want to, you know, better yourself. You want to, you know, get that extra skill. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm, you know, trying to do. Um, ideally, uh, I find a good ma- master's program abroad. I would really like to, uh, you know, study uh, somewhere outside of the United States. Right. Um, and if that happens, I'll be probably gone for two or three years mm-hmm. uh, doing that. And then uh, coming back and find the, finding, you know, uh, a, a job again, <laughs> right. so uh, you know, start all over again. Right. Uh, but making sure that uh, that I keep going, uh, and then I keep uh, you know gathering skills. Right. So I'm talking about you know the next five years, and then after that, I really don't know what what the future you know holds for me. Right. But and, um, but. What type of uh, master's you want to get? Is it also in electrical engineering, or do you want to kind of change it a little? Yeah, I think I would like to change it. Um, most of the the work that I do is uh, related with space. Right. Um, but if I do a master's, I would like to get into the uh, immersive technology field. So virtual reality, augmented reality, all of that. Uh, not uh-huh. only because NASA uses it a lot uh, in regards to training the astronauts, mm-hmm. and like I told you, the the company, this company, Felix and Paul, are doing great things with that technology. Right. Uh, so I would like to understand a little bit more of how that technology works, mm-hmm. uh, but focus on the project management. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, right now, most of my projects have to do with some kind of project management. So I would mm-hmm. like to, you know, get uh, more experience on that. Um, Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to be, uh, technical, uh, very technical, very heavy on the electrical engineering part of it, right. uh, a little bit more project management. <laughs> so you'll probably be leaving NASA forever after that then and doing, working with like more private corporations. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I really don't know. Uh, hopefully, you know, there's always an opportunity to go back to NASA. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if that's not where where life takes me, then you know I'm also happy to explore other industries and other mm-hmm. opportunities. Oh yeah, and uh, how is it with the ladies, bro? When they're all like, "Hey, where do you work?" and then you're all like, "NASA." <laughs> <laughs> does it does you know it help? It, it, it does. It does. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I you bet know, it does. Uh, you know what's funny, Luis, that you mentioned that. Um, well, in Houston, near NASA, everyone uh, there knows about it. Probably, you know, their dad or their uncle or someone they know works at NASA. Right. So it's not very cool. It's not very wow. Uh, but obviously, you know, outside of Houston, a lot of my friends really, you know, uh, get excited when I bring it up. Right. Uh, funny enough, uh, a lot of my friends introduced me like that. Like, oh, this is Eric. He works at NASA. That's oh, the first shit. thing they would say. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, that's the first thing they would they would mention. Yeah. Um, but it's just very, you know, mind blowing how a lot of people don't know about the projects that we're doing at NASA. Right. So every time I meet someone, you know, it's it's a good opportunity for me to share what NASA is doing and all the great science that's happening. Right. Um, and if, you know, if that gets me, you know, lucky with a girl, then be it, you know, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not mad about it. <laughs> right. Hey, man, I'm not hating either, bro. That, that's tight <laughs> as hell. I wish I could say that. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, man, I also, like I said earlier, you know, we, I want to go ahead and encourage the people from El Paso to, to see themselves as, you know, having really badass jobs, you know, like, come on, man, get, get, get on with it. Stop trying to just get a mediocre job that you don't even like. And, you know, let's, 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 let's get it on, you know? Well, what yeah. would you like to tell the El Paso and Juarez people um, on, on following their dreams to, 
be something great in life, you know, to represent themselves as Mexicanos, Mexican Americans, and and to be proud of being Mexican without being ashamed of it and wanting to be white or whatnot, you know, like being proud of of your heritage, your culture, and still be still be prestigious and and smart and have a good job, right? What can you? What advice or anything you could tell the people from here? Uh, what I want to tell them um, is that the opportunities are out there. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. we don't we don't see them, so we think it's impossible. But that either means that we're not looking hard enough, or that uh, when we find an opportunity, we're afraid to fail. Right. Mm -hmm. So my advice would be. We are going to sell. I mean, that's not something that, <laughs> you know, that's, that's not negotiable. You right. are going to, you know, get opportunities where they reject you. They're going to say no, right. but we only need one yes, right? Uh, right. And it, it doesn't, you know, hurt um, uh, getting all those rejections because at the end of the day, you, you learn from that. You, you can improve a little bit more when you get a no. Uh, but you're looking for that one uh, yes, right? You, you're looking for that one opportunity where they take you in. Mm -hmm. uh, so look for the opportunities that are out there. Uh, don't be afraid when you find one to, you know, fail uh, because that's just part of life. That's just part of, you know, the process. Right. And, uh, and get used to failing because the more you do it, the, the, the you know, the less it sucks. <laughs> uh, so, so go out there, you know, put yourself in that, um, in, in that position where you're vulnerable and, and maybe you're going to fail, but if you do, uh, you know that you can apply for the next job opportunity. Uh, so, so that would be my, my one advice, you know, don't be afraid to get rejected. Right. Uh, don't be afraid to, you know, get that letter that says, sorry, you know, you're not good for this, for, for this position because you'll learn something about yourself. Maybe you can ask them for feedback. Oh, what did I do wrong? What can I improve? And, and now that is just opportunity for growth. So don't be afraid of, you know, getting those rejections and, and, uh, and growing from it. Um, and, and regards to, you know, the culture, Embrace it, you know, we're, we're all Rasa, we, we're, you know, trying to better ourselves um, when it comes to our, our culture and our heritage. Um, you squeeze that, uh, the language, if you're bilingual, if you speak Spanish, uh, you know, that's very valuable. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we see the value that much here in El Paso because most people you talk to are bilingual, maybe, right. your circle, you know, your family. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you go outside of cities, border cities like El Paso, uh, knowing Spanish goes a very, very long way. I found that, you know, when I when I get to got to Houston, right, and a lot of my you know coworkers are not bilingual. I think from a group of, I want to say thirty, uh, thirty five, uh, maybe three or two are fluent in Spanish. So, you know, that's a, that's a very small percentage. Mm -hmm. and, and that's something that you can really, you know, uh, take home when it comes to the, your skill set. Right. So don't be afraid to, uh, you know, show off that, that skill, that uh, um, bilingualism. It's, it's also very important. Um, and our, our food, right? Like our, uh, either if you're Mexican or from Latin America, mm -hmm. uh, our food is delicious and you can also <laughs> leverage from that. I know that I've taken a couple of dishes when we have potlucks and things like that at work. Right. I'll bring, you know, my, my mom's rice or, or beans with cheese or something <laughs> like that. Yeah. And people love that, right? Like, so don't be afraid of showing that part of your culture. Hell yeah. Um, those things are, are valued very well. Exactly. And, and then it's crazy because, here in the United States, we don't know how much people like Mexicans, man. But you go, like, to Europe, to Canada, to all these places, and people love us, bro. They really do. So, you know, be proud of who, what you are and and show it with, with, with pride and honor. You know what I mean? We don't have to want to have to act like an Anglo or white or European to be to be smart, prestigious people. You know, we could be who we are. 
and still be smart and capable, right? Exactly. All right. Well, Mr. Eric Lopez, man, it's been a, a really badass conversation talking to you, man. Uh, maybe we could do it again, do one in Spanish, since uh, now I know that you're fluent in Spanish. Maybe we could go ahead and do it at, at another time and, and uh, you know, try to, to speak to the people in Mexico, you know, in, in Juarez. And actually, I think my yeah. mom's around from Delicias or something like that as well, man. She's from yeah. some little town in Chihuahua. I don't know. I don't know. I think it is Delicias, but I have to ask her, man, but... Yeah, we're yeah. also from here, man. So um, thank you, man. Like I said, thank you so much for having a conversation with us. I hope uh, that you keep on uh, moving on forward in whatever endeavor you have. And I wish you the best, man. And hopefully yeah, thank you. Hopefully, you represent El Paso everywhere you go, bro. Let them know of it's course, cool. Of course, man, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And let me know when you want to do the Spanish version of this. Hell yeah, uh, man. Thank you for... Yeah, thanks for the time and for, uh, you know, all the great questions. I, have, I had a lot of fun, so thanks, Lee. Hell, same here, man, and I hope our viewers love it, too. They they will, man. This is badass. Um, and thank you, man. We'll, we'll go ahead and keep in touch with you so we can schedule one in Espanol. So, uh, all right. All right, cool, man. Thank you. Have a nice day, bro. Thank you. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.